back friends this is divya gaurav again and today we will discuss the levels of organization or ecological hierarchy in our previous lecture we discussed some of the basic terms used in ecology for example what is ecology what is ecosystem and what is biosphere the next topic comes the levels of organization or ecological hierarchy which we are going to discuss today friends what is that as i have told you earlier that all the living organisms reside inside the biosphere or sphere of life or the living world so each and every forms of life form a biosphere now inside that biosphere organisms are arranged at different levels keeping in mind their interaction or relation with one another that very arrangement is known as levels of organization or ecological hierarchy or in other words the arrangement of all the living organism as per their relation or interaction with one another and with the physical environment is known as levels of organization or ecological hierarchy at the base of this arrangement comes the individual and at the top comes the biosphere or the whole living world now in ecology an individual is referred to as a single organism that is when we discuss the interaction of one animal one plant or microorganism it forms the individual in ecology so individual literally means single organism now individual in ecology it is defined as uh, in ecology individual is defined as an organism which is able to perform each and every function of life on its own an organism be it an animal or plant or microorganism if it is able to perform each and every function essential for its survival on its own or it is able to sustain itself independently then that organism is referred to as individual in ecology okay so an individual is composed of a number of organs organelles and body part and those organs organelles and body parts unite to perform various functions of life there is one more very important character of an individual that individual mate or breed only with identical individual of same species individual mate or breed only with identical species identical individual of same species bearing some exceptions but the overall feature is that they mate only with identical species of same identical individual of same species okay now the next level comes the population what is that now in a um, uh, day to day life we very lo uh, loosely use the term population like the population of humans likewise there are population of cats dogs plants whatever but in ecology population is defined as a group of individuals or more scientifically a population in ecology is defined as a group of individual belonging to same species residing a particular area over a given period of time that is a group of individuals of same species occupying a particular area at a given period of time is known as population now population have got their own gene pool and range of traits population maintain their own gene pool and range of traits also populations have got a definite size a definite age structure and a definite density as we all hear that populations maintain a definite size a definite age structure and a definite density so these are some of the major characters of population the next is one more thing uh, what is uh, how does the population increase or decrease very simple the population increases when the number of individuals are added to it 
that is by birth and immigration of individual population of any species increase by birth and immigration of individual or the increase in the number of newer individual likewise population decreases by death and immigration of individuals population decreases by death and immigration of individuals the next level is the community what is this community a, a group of population loosely a group of population form a community or community is formed when population of different species occupy a certain area in inside a population we have shown that it composes of individual of one single species but inside a community there will be individuals belonging to different different species different species of animal different species of plants different species of microorganism so individual or organisms belonging to different species form community in ecological terms a community is defined as a group of individuals belonging to different species who are interdependent on each other for their survival a group of individual belonging to different species who are interdependent on each other or or for that they are in constant interaction with each other form a community for example we the humans are dependent on plants for our nutrition likewise plants are also dependent on other animals for pollination and dispersal of seeds again plants are also dependent on microorganism present in soil and water for the supply of nutrients for their metabolism so these interdependent species of animals plants and microorganisms together form a community okay one more character of community is that they are the actual sites where the biotic interactions occur friends uh, you must have heard about the biotic interactions like the parasitism the commensalism the symbiosis etc all these biotic interaction actually occur at the level of this community so this is one more character of community the next level is ecosystem it has been discussed earlier but here i repeat that ecosystem when community of organisms are taken together with their outer environment or physical environment it forms the ecosystem okay when the community of living organisms are taken together with the outer world like the air water or wind that forms our environment it forms the ecosystem inside an ecosystem there will be two major factors the living components or the biotic components and the non living components like the air water soil so this form an ecosystem now each ecosystem is unique in itself by what first of all the space which an ecosystem occupy like a lake it occupy certain square kilometers of area and second it has got its special flora and fauna that is certain kinds of plants and animal are present inside or around this lake so in this way this lake have got its special identity which will be different from a forest or a grassland because the vegetation like the plants and the trees and the living organism like the animals and microorganism will be slightly different from that residing into a lake so a lake forms our aquatic ecosystem and the grassland or forest forms a terrestrial ecosystem so keeping in mind that spe uh, that speciality an ecosystem can be uh, broadly of two kinds first is the terrestrial ecosystem comprising of the forest the grassland and the desert and the second is the aquatic ecosystem comprising of the lakes the seas the oceans etc so this is ecosystem next comes biomes what is that biomes are nothing 
they are large ecosystems biomes are considered as large ecosystem because each biome accommodates in itself a number of ecosystem that is why biomes are considered as large ecosystems in ecology biomes are defined as large stretches of land or sea having more or less same kind of climatic conditions and dominant vegetation in ecology biomes are defined as large stretches of land or sea having more or less same kind of climatic conditions and uh, uh, dominant vegetation is known as biomes in uh, like you know, we have studied in a uh, geography chapters that there are few five or six major biomes on our planet earth so this is biomes finally comes the biosphere now all these life forms finally culminates to form the biosphere that is the living of uh, living world or the sphere of life so biosphere is the sphere which accommodates each and every kind of life form and these are formed by the combination of all the kinds of biomes present in our atmosphere uh, present on our planet earth so this is the levels of organization or ecological hierarchy for us friends let us have a little more uh, detail about this biosphere what is that as we have told earlier that biosphere is the sphere of life that it accommodates each and every kind of living organism but where actually the living world or the living organism is present now let us see that biosphere is uh, comprises of a very integrated and interactive zone comprising of the air zone or atmosphere the water zone or hydrosphere and the soil zone or lithosphere the air zone or atmosphere the water zone or hydrosphere and the soil zone or lithosphere and this intersecting area between these three circles form the biosphere this and that is why it has been said that it is highly integrated and interacting area which uh, comprises of each and every kind of living organisms now friends there are two essentiality for life to survive the first is light and second is nutrients the first is light and second is nutrients in an in biosphere the light primarily comes from sun the light primarily comes from sun and the nutrients have two categories the first is the essential gases like the oxygen which we need for breathing the carbon dioxide which plants use for photosynthesis and prepare their food and other gases like hydrogen nitrogen so these gases are present where the these are present in the air zone or atmosphere then comes various kind of nutrients like the potassium phosphorus calcium magnesium etc etc which we need for our metabolism these nutrients are scattered either in soil or water that is they are scattered either in hydrosphere or lithosphere that is why life is confined into this intersecting region of all these three spheres technically this source of energy or light and the scattered nutrients are present 600 meters below sea level and 2000 meter above sea level or surface of earth and that is why this area forms biosphere where all the living organisms reside the chemicals which are present in the atmosphere and the nutrients which are present in the soil and water gets recycled over and over again and in this way life continues to survive thank you